Hi guys, Jordan with Motion Array, and today we're going to be creating a VHS effect inside of Premiere Pro. And hey, if you're not familiar with us, we're all about helping you, the video creator, with templates, footage, tutorials, plugins, audio, and more. In fact, we have tons of free Premiere Pro templates ready to download. I've put a link in the description down below, so make sure to hop over and grab some free stuff. So the final effect that we're going to go for is to take a piece of footage that looks like this and make it look like it was recorded and played back over a VHS tape like this. We had such a great response from one of our previous videos on how to get the vintage look, so we decided to update that effect and really dial it in to get a really amazing VHS effect. Later on, we're also going to be showing you how to take your audio and add some effects to make it sound a lot more like your visuals look. And then finally, we're going to be showing you one of our free VHS overlays here at Motion Array that you can use inside of your own projects to really take this effect home. So let's jump into Premiere Pro and take a look at how to get this effect. So here we are in Premiere Pro, and the first thing that we're going to do is simply place down our clip onto our timeline. Great. Okay, next up, we want to go over here to our project panel, and we can right click and select New Item, Adjustment Layer. Once you select this, you can place your adjustment layer on top of your footage. Now, you can technically add the effects that we're going to create right onto your footage, but I like using adjustment layers personally. And this will also give me a really simple way of showing some before and after examples as we go on. So, the first thing that we're going to do to get our VHS effect is, believe it or not, a color correction. So, with your layer highlighted, go ahead and select your Lumetri color section. This can be subjective based on taste, but if you follow these general principles, you'll end up with a nice effect. To start, let's go down to the creative section. We're going to do two things really quick. Increase the faded film effect, and decrease sharpening. I'm going to go 50 for the faded film effect, and negative 50 for sharpening, but it's totally up to you depending on your footage and your preferences. Next up, let's go down to curves. Our goal is to basically clip both the whites and the blacks to take information out of both of them as footage recorded off of these old formats typically has less dynamic range. So within your curve section, you can lower your top right section and raise your bottom left section. Now, this will look a little bit extreme, so if we pull each of these back in so that they're a little bit closer to their original angle, we can retain the state of all of the information in this region while still clipping our blacks and whites. Cool, and this is what we have so far. Not much of a change, but we're just getting started search for the effect called Channel Blur. What this will do is help us to achieve that color shifting that typically happens on old footage like this. So, this can be a matter of preference, but really a lot of people have settled on using red and blue shifting just because it looks aesthetically pleasing in a vintage sort of way. So in the effect, go to either the red or the blue channel and raise it up to your liking. I'm settling on 32. Now, you should start to see that it takes the edges of the element in your shot and really starts to push it out so that it's a visible fringe. This is almost what we want, but not quite. Go down to your blur dimension, and it should be set to both horizontal and vertical. Select either horizontal or vertical, and remember which one you chose, because we're going to be duplicating this effect in a second and utilizing the opposite parameters. So for me, I'm using vertical at the moment. Now let's take this effect, highlight it, and using Control or Command C, copy it. Then hit Ctrl or Command V to paste it again. Now, let's take the second iteration here, and we're just going to set the red down to zero again, and the blue up to roughly the same amount. Play around with it and see what you like. Okay, so now go down to the dimensions and select the opposite from before. So for me, I'm going to go with horizontal now. You should also notice that around your frame, you've got the same sort of fringing happening as well. If you don't like that, you can go to your channel blur effect settings and select repeat edge pixel for both. Awesome. Next up, we're going to be tackling how to get this sort of tracking line effect that goes up your footage. It's done using the wave warp effect. So go down to your effects and search for wave warp. Place it down and let's start tweaking some settings. Change your wave type to square. Wave height can stay at 10 and wave width we're going to want to be really high. Anywhere north of 600 will help you to get this just one line at any given time, but I'm going to go up to 1000. Wave direction you can set to 0 to make it horizontal. And wave speed you can set to anywhere between 0.1 and 0.2 to get that nice slow crawl up your footage. But you'll notice that you've got some black edges around the frame, showing exactly where we're crunching the footage in to get the scanning line effect. So if you go to pinning, 
and select all edges, you'll make the footage respect the edges of the frame. Finally, your wave warp effect at this point is basically on repeat. So the phase parameter won't make any changes apart from just changing where along the pattern it starts. So with that, we've gone from this to this. Nice, but we've still got a few more pieces to add. Go down to your effects again and search for noise. Add it to your adjustment layer. Once you add it, let's dial up the noise to about 10% or whatever looks good with your footage. And next, let's add one more effect called mosaic. This can help to really get that low resolution look that helps to sell the fact that this was shot with a cheap camera. We already made the image softer before by reducing sharpening, but this will actually take the footage and make it look like it was shot at a resolution below 720p, no matter how it's actually displayed. If you want nice crisp footage with this effect, then you can skip this particular mosaic effect, but if you really want to sell the idea that this was shot on a worse camera, then take the mosaic effect and set the width to somewhere around 1000 and the height to somewhere around 500. This, in combination with noise, will give that impression of really low quality footage. And guys, if you really wanted to call it quits from here, you can actually use this effect and get some great results. But we're going to be showing you a few more awesome ways to take this effect to the next level. Right now, our effect is sort of soft and almost gives a dreamy sense. But if you want to make it a little bit more harsh and old, you can add an effect called Unsharp Mask. Once this is on, take it and set the amount to anywhere between 80 to 120. I like 110. Then take the radius and increase it until you start to see it crunching your footage. I like around 25 to 30. This gives it a bit more of that harsh feel to it, which can really help to sell the fact that it was shot on an old camera. This really starts to get into preferences of style, but you can leave it at the very bottom of all your effects if you'd like, or play around with placing it above your mosaic and noise effects in order to see the different effects that you get. But personally, I kind of like it at the very bottom, impacting all of the other work that we just did. But first, let's make your life a little bit easier by holding Control or Command and selecting each one of these effects that you added to your adjustment layer. Now, when you right click any that are selected, you can hit Save Preset. And now you can actually keep all the work that you've done for this effect and save it as a drag and drop preset effect to be able to use at a later date. Awesome, right? Next up, let's add a second adjustment layer and a second wave warp effect onto it. This one, we're going to be using to try to get the effect where some sporadic video tracking problems happen. So set type to noise, height to 10, width to 20, and direction to zero again. And keep the speed at one and set pinning to all edges. The reason that we're adding this to a second adjustment layer above is actually just so that we can have a really easy way to keyframe it. If we play it through right now, it looks Cool, but it's a little bit distracting happening just constantly at all times. By cutting out certain sections of the adjustment layer with our blade tool, we can effectively turn this effect on and off whenever we want. Now this is what the effect looks like. Cool, we've got one last step and then a little bit of a bonus for you to try out. Let's add one more adjustment layer on top here and we're gonna add a crop effect. Basically, we're gonna be adding some black bars to the sides so that it looks more like a traditional VHS 4x3 aspect ratio. You could actually change your project resolution, but my guess is that a lot of you will be using this effect within a traditional 16x9 workflow and just using this effect on the side for a couple pieces of footage. So let's crop in both the left and the right by 12.5% each. And as long as you're starting with a 16x9 aspect ratio, this will actually give you exactly a 4x3 ratio. Right now, the edges are super crisp, but if you wanted to keep in line with that faded film sort of look, you can increase the edge feather to closer to 10. And guys, finally, to give a little bit of a cherry on top, we're going to help you to emulate some old school lens effects. So let's take all of these adjustment layers and move them up by one track. And then hold Alt and drag your main footage clip up by one track to duplicate it. So now they should be stacked directly on top of each other. Now with your upper footage track selected, Let's go up to Effect Controls and increase the scale to 101. Barely any difference. But now let's go to Opacity and we can create a circular mask here by clicking this button. Nice. Now let's move it around so that it's bordering sort of close to the edge of frame. And then crank up the feathering to 500. And finally, let's select Inverted Mask. So now what you should see is that 
The scaled up version is showing through around the edges of the frame. Older vintage lenses can sometimes have optical distortions at the edge of the frame. And this is what we're trying to emulate. But we have one last thing to add. Search for a Gaussian blur and add it to the scaled up layer. Then set the blurriness to about 10. And now instead of just a distorted or blurred edge of the frame, it's acting as if there's sort of this optical difference happening at the edge of frame as opposed to in the middle. Pretty neat, right? So with all of this, we've gone from our footage starting like this to now being something more like this. And if you guys wanted to go even one step further, we have a free VHS overlay that you can add to your footage and set to screen to get that true VHS degradation and scanning effect. I'll link to the pack that it's a part of in the description below. It's totally free, but just a heads up that it's part of a download pack that you have to share on Facebook in order to actually have access to. So just wanted to give you a heads up for that one. And lastly, I said that we wanted to show you how to add audio to make your effect sound as good or as bad as it looks. I'm gonna add some audio of a beach with waves crashing here, just so we have something for reference. And now we're gonna go down to our effects again and search for distortion under the audio effects section. Add it to your audio layer and then hit the edit section under effect controls. Now under these parameters, search for a preset called tape drive. What this will do is essentially give you a hissing and breaking apart when your audio reaches certain levels. And now all there's left to do is to search for a low pass filter, add it to your audio, and set it to about 4,500. To get something that sounds a little bit more like this. And guys, that was a long tutorial, but if you made it to the end, congratulations. This effect will hopefully serve you super well if you ever need to get that sort of vintage VHS look. And I hope that some of the methods we used along the way will help you to be able to add your own flair to this and other effects you encounter as well. If you guys like this video, consider giving it a like or even subscribing to our YouTube channel. And if you're looking for other tutorials, we always have a lot more here at MotionArray.com. And if after all of that, you just wanted to pick up a VHS overlay or really anything else, feel free to check out our marketplace. But as always guys, thank you so much for stopping by and I can't wait to see you in the next video.